Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want us to look at James Orengo's entry into the Seaya gubernatorial race in 2022. James Orengo is the current senator for Seaya County. And from all indications, James Orengo is going to contest as the next governor for Seaya County. What are James Orengo's chances? And what does that mean for Raila Amolo Odinga and his 2022 presidential bid? But before we get into all those details, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, what we do on this channel is simple. We analyze politics in a way you can't find any other place. So the best thing you can do is just to click the subscribe button. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Now, for those who follow politics very closely in this country, during the last general election, James Orengo won the Sayer senatorial seat or race without a single poster in Sayer. James Orengo just erected a billboard in Kisumu. For those who know Kisumu, just round about next to Kisumu boys, that's the place where James Orengo erected a billboard. In Siaya, there, there was nothing like any poster. There was nothing like James Orengo campaigning for his seat. James Orengo was just elected because of his name. And even on the election's day, James Orengo didn't even have agents. But this time around, for the first time, I've actually come across, because I was in Siaya the other day, billboards of James Orengo in Siaya. And I've been seeing several of them in Siaya. What's happening? And the question which Kenyans are asking is whether James Orengo is, can make a good governor. In fact, I spoke to several people in Siaya and they were telling me that if Orengo were to contest again as the Senate, he would not even need to go back to the ground to campaign. But for governor, he has to campaign. Now, before we understand all this, whether James Orengo can win or not, we need to go and understand the history of James Orengo. That's number one. Then number two, we need to figure out who are his opponents. Then we go to the numbers. Then probably we can go to the dy dynamics, which, is, which are likely to determine that particular by election. Let us begin by going through briefly James Orengo's political history. James Orengo is 70 years old today. He was actually born in 1951. James Orengo is not new in Kenyan politics. He's actually a brand. James Orengo, you can't write the history of Kenyan politics without mentioning the name James Orengo. James Orengo was a, was a student at the university, a student leader at the University of Nairobi. That's where he made his name. He was first elected as a member of parliament in 1980. During that time, James Orengo was only 29. He actually became the youngest member of parliament at that time. And I remember reading somewhere, not reading, someone was telling me who was involved in that campaign also, that Raila Molo Dinga was his campaign manager. And during that time, there was a cabinet secretary, cabinet minister from Ugenya. What was the name? If someone can remind me the name of that, the guy Orengo kicked out. So this guy was so powerful and was very close to Jaramogi. So Orengo, Raila, and some young tags engineered a strategy of locking out those old guards. And that's how Orengo was elected in 1980. He became the youngest member of parliament in the history of Kenya at that time. Then you remember we had uh, those uh, arrests, the clamor for monthly partisan came up. Then Orengo was elected again in parliament in 1992 under Ford Kenya and again he was re-elected in 1997 again on Ford Kenya. Remember in 1997 Raila Odinga contested for the presidency under the party the NDP but Orengo was elected in Ugenya on Ford Kenya ticket. Then when it came to 2002 James Orengo lost his seat because he had vied for the presidency so he lost. Then he made a comeback in 
seven. Actually, he made a comeback during the the, the, the no campaigns around two or five. Then when two or seven came, James Orengo easily won his seat as the Ugenya member of parliament. And uh, we remember in 2007, we also had that post-election violence. Then after the post-election violence, Orengo was part of the Anan team representing Raila Odinga. He was appointed a cabinet minister, minister for lands. And in 2013, James Orengo decided to shift to the Senate. In fact, it is alleged that Raila Odinga prevailed upon many of his cabinet ministers during that time. Because remember, we had a Nusumkate. So Raila had some governors. Nani had also governors. I mean, Raila had ministers. Kibaki also had ministers. So Raila Odinga actually prevailed on Otino Kajuan, Anyang Nyongo, James Orengo. He also prevailed upon uh, Josphat Nanok, who was, the, was a member of parliament then. He prevailed upon Joho. He prevailed upon uh, Kingi. And there are some others to go and contest as governors. But most of these people refused. Orengo refused. Nyongo refused. Kajuang refused because they believed that Senate was going to be a higher house the way the constitution had envisaged. So Orengo was elected the senator. And then in 2017 again, he was re-elected. But in 2022, James Orengo is now focusing on the Senate. Will James Orengo win in the Senate? Now, there are several factors which are going to determine the elections, whether Orengo is going to be elected or not. The first factor is going to be clan politics. Then the other factor is going to be party politics. So let us focus on some of these dynamics which are going to determine whether Orengo will easily win or whether it's not going to win. Now, before we get into the numbers, let us begin by looking at Sia as a county. Sia County has around uh, six constituencies. Six constituencies. And Cornel Rasanga, who is the current governor, is serving his second term. He's not going to defend his seat constitutionally. So Rasanga is going to be a factor being the sitting governor. And of course, Rasanga is also going to run as a member of parliament for Alego Songa. So we have six constituencies. We have Ugenya, Ugunja, Alego Songa, we have Game, we have Bondo, and we also have Rarieda. Who are going to be his opponents? This is where it's going to be very tricky. Charles Oweno, the former police spokesperson, has declared his interest for the same seat. He comes from uh, Ugenya, but his roots are in Siaya. Oweno believes that he has the numbers, that he can actually, the people can, of Olego can, Olego can vote for him. Then if he asks the other side, then he will be ready. Then the serious challenger is uh, the former member of parliament, Wajonya, Nicholas Gumbo. During the last election, many people believed that Nicholas Gumbo actually won the ODM nominations. But again, that did not happen. Then he ended up running as an independent candidate. He got quite a, a, a huge number of votes, but he never succeeded. Can Gumbo outweigh James Orengo in 2022? Those are the questions. Now, these are the factors which are going to determine whether Orengo is going to be elected. The first factor is the game of numbers. And the game of numbers is going to be very interesting. Just like I said, Sia has six constituencies. Orengo comes from, uh, he, Orengo initially was a member of parliament for Ugenya. By that time, Ugenya was a single constituency. Today, Ugenya was split into two. So we have Ugenya constituency and we have Ugunja. So if I add the vote for Alego, I mean for Ugunja and uh, the registered voters for Ugunja and Ugenya, because Orego initially represented that constituency, so I want to assume that is his constituency, they are the highest because Ugunja has 57,600. I mean, Ugenya has 6,000, I mean, 57,600. Ugunja has around 50,000. 487. Now, if you add that, you get 108 
1000 votes so orengo is coming with that block of 108 then there is uh, a lego songa which is second in number has around 103000 votes and because a lego is not going to produce a presidential i mean a uh, gubernatorial candidate chances are that it's going to be a battleground so the people of Alego Songa will determine who becomes the next member of parliament. So if James Orengo can go and win the support also of uh, Alego Songa, he will be home and dry. But that's not guaranteed. Then there is game where Jakoyo comes from. Game has around 80,000 votes, clean votes. Then there is Bondo and Rarieda. Bondo has around 90,200 votes. Rarida has 75,700 votes. So basically that makes it around uh, 166. If you add Bondo and Rarida, because Bondo and Rarida are also one constituency. Again, that's where Gumbo comes from. So if Gumbo can secure Bondo and Rarida, then James Orengo will have huge, huge trouble. So the, the race is going to be open. But they are, just like I said, clan politics is going to play a factor and party politics is going to play a factor. If Orengo is going to get the ODM ticket, for example, then Bondo and Rarieda can easily tilt the equation. In, the, in 2013, I actually supported Oduol in Siaya. And he had banked on the support of, of, of Rarieda, Bondo, and Ogonja. But when the real votes were now cast, Party politics played a huge role. And he failed terribly in those constituencies. But from these figures, you can tell that Bondo Rarieda will give 166,000 votes. So if Nicholas Gubo can secure Bondo and Rarieda, then he can now choose a running mate, let's say from a Lego Usonga. <laughs> then Orengo will have trouble. But if Orengo can secure Ugonja and Ugenya, then he gets a leg Usonga votes, and then he gets game. Game shot for Orengo. So it's going to be one of the most closely watched gubernatorial elections in this country. So the, number, the first dynamic is going to be the game of numbers. The second dynamics is going to be the ability to spend. Who can spend money? Because, you know, one thing which voters have learned is that they elect people and once these people are elected they leave and they never come back so now they, they've, they've devised something they call chothber yani malizana na mimito so between orengo charles owino and nicholas gumbo who will spend the most on voters nicholas gumbo has deep pockets I also want to assume that James Orengo is also prepared. But James Orengo, previously, he never campaigned. He never had a posture, poster. James Orengo never even had agents, but he won. Now this time, if he's going to have, if he's going to campaign on the ground, he's going to have agents. Can somebody defeat him? And will James Orengo be willing to spend money on people? Because our politics has been commercialized. So that's another thing which is going to play out. The other thing is the development record. What is James Orengo's development record versus Charles Owino? Charles Owino was a police officer and one of the issues he's dealing with is that Kenyans, especially Luos, actually suffered when he was a spokesperson. But you know, he was just doing his job. Then Nicholas Gumbo, what was his record as a member of parliament? Development record as a member of parliament. James Orengo is facing serious challenge when it comes to development. But there are those who believe that James Orengo is in the league of Professor Anyang Nyongo. People who understood or understand what devolution was supposed to achieve. So they can easily implement devolutions in their counties regardless of their previous records. Because James Orengo was a member of parliament. What is the work of a member of parliament? Legislation. 
So if you want to judge James Orengo, for example, you, you need to go to parliament where he served, the, where he represented the people of Ugenya and check on his record. You can go to the Senate and check on his record. Development ideally is not the work of a member of parliament. The only disadvantage Orengo is facing is that currently members of parliament have CDF. When Orengo was a member of parliament, there was no, nothing like CDF, which a member of parliament would hide behind. To, to claim that he has done this, he has done this, he has done this. So the, when it comes to development record, he's going to face a bit of challenge. But again, based on the performance of Nyongo in Kisumu, I think the people might decide. And lastly is Raila Amolo Odinga's endorsement. There are, there are, there are, there are certain constituencies and certain counties where Raila Odinga would not want to lose. One of them is Siaya. Do you think Raila Odinga can give Siaya to Orengo if he doesn't want Orengo? And do you think he can give it to Nicholas Gombo if he doesn't want Nicholas Gombo or even Charles Orengo? So the next member of parliament will be the person who Raila Odinga is going to endorse for that seat. If Orengo is going to get that endorsement, it's fine. But also I forgot to mention that there's a fourth candidate, the Ugunja member of parliament, Opiwandai. In fact, at some point at initial stages, there were claims that the ODM party and Raila Muludinga were leaning towards Opiwandai. So the person the party, ODM party and Raila Odinga is likely to endorse has a high chance of becoming the next governor for Siaya. And I want to leave it this open now. I want to leave this open now. Who do you think is likely to become the next governor for Siaya? I want you to vote. There's Orengo. Just say Orengo. There is Gumbo. Just step Gumbo down. There's Wandai. Just step Wandai down. And then there is Charles Owino. Who do you think is likely to become the next governor for Siaya? And by the way, I also want to do a similar thing for Homabe, a similar thing for Migori, Nairobi, and other counties. Because in Homabe, there's a challenge for Raila between Mbadi, Gladys, Magwanga, Kidero, who? <laughs> Migori is sorted. I think Uchila Yako will carry the ODM flag. But can we win the, 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 the seat using ODM? Because there's Obado, there's Dalmaso Tieno, and then there's the Korea, Korea factor down there. I don't know what you think. Let me hear your thoughts on this. And uh, Jimmy Wanjigi is embarking on a journey in Nyanza for day. So I'm going to do the next video on that. Thank you and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.